Oh, my name, I'm oh, a solicitor. He had a wife named Javel. He lived a normal life and the job and takes hold for people. If you can dig a hole, you can always earn enough to stay alive. That was enough for Ahmed, but it wasn't enough for Jamel. One day, as usual, Jamel, Jamel went to the public bath to wash herself in the hot pot and chat with the other woman there. By the entrance, the woman in charge told her. Don't come in. The wife of the king's royal fortune teller is taking the whole place for herself. Who does she think she is just because her husband tells fortune? All the fortune do teller does anyway is predict the future. But all she could do was return home in anger. <sighs> that evening when Ahmed handed his money for the day, she said, Look at these few weasley my bits. I won't put up with this any longer. Tomorrow you sit in the marketplace and become a fortune teller. Jamel, are you crazy? What do I know about fortune tellers? If anyone asks you a question, just mumble something right. Or would you rather have me leave forever? So the next day, Ahmed sold his shovel and his pick and bought the dice and the rope and the void of a fortune teller. And he sat at the marketplace near the public bank. When he was hardly settled, the wife of one of the king's ministers came to him and said, Fortune teller, I ain't lost my ring and I need to you to find it. Ahmed cast the dice as he desperately thought of something good wise to say. He glanced up at the lady's cloak. There he saw a small hole and showing the red the bit of her arm. Of course, this was quite embarrassing. So Ahmed leaned forward and whispered urgently. Madam, I see a hole. A what? A hole, a hole. That's right, a hole. She rushed back to the bath and found the hole in the wall where she had hidden it and forgot it. Then she came back to Ahmed. God be praised, you knew where it was. And to Ahmed's amazement, she gave him a big mama monster packet. <laughs> That evening, when J Jamel saw the big mommy monster packet and heard the story, she said, You see, there's nothing to it. God was supposed to this day, but I didn't test him on another one. Do it or I'm weaving. Now, it happened that on the very night at the palace of the king, the mommy monster packet was drawn. <laughs> Forty pairs of hands carried away forty packets of mummy monsters. The test was reported next morning to the king. He commanded, Bring me my warrior fortune tellers and his helpers. The fortune tellers cast the dice and mumbled quite widely. Not even one could locate the thieves or the treasure. Fraud, throw them all in prison. Now, the king had heard about the fortune teller who had found no ring of his minister's wife. So he sent two guards to the marketplace to bring Ahmed, who appeared to be worried before him. <coughs> Ahmed, when 40 mummy monster packets have been stolen, what can you tell me about the thieves? Your Majesty, I can tell you there are 40 thieves. Amazing. None of my own fortune tellers knew that much. But now you must find the treasure and the thieves. I went almost fainted. I'll do my best, Your Majesty. But, but, but it will take some time. How long? I haven't guessed the longest he would get. Uh, Forty days, Your Majesty. One day for each thief. A long time indeed. Very well. You shall have it. If you succeed, I'll make you rich. But if you fail, you'll rot the others in prison. Back home, Ahmed told Jamel. You see the trouble you have caused us? In 40 days, the king will lock me away. Nonsense, just find it like you found the ring. Jamel, I tell you, I only found the ring by God's grace. Accepting his dark fate, Ahmed took 40 elements and put, placed it in the jar. I'll eat one of these elements each evening. That will tell me when my 40 days are done. Now, it happened that one of the king's own servants was one of the 40 thieves, and he had heard about the king's feet with Ahmed. That same evening, he hurried to the thieves' meeting place and reported to the chief. There is a fortune teller who said they will find the treasure and the thieves in 40 days. 
he's just bluffing, but we can afford to take chances. Go to his house and find out what you can. The servant head outside of Ahmed's house, and he listened. Just then, Ahmed took the first almond from the jar and ate it. He told Last him that. one. That's one. The thief was so surprised, he hurried back and told the chief. This fortune teller has amazing powers. Without seeing me, he knew I was at the back of the house. I clearly heard him say, that's one. You must have imagined it. Tomorrow night, I told you to go. So the next night, the servant returned to Ahmed's roof with another one of the thieves. As they were listening, Ahmed ate a second elf and said, That's two. They fled the room and hurried back to the chief. The servant told him, He knew there were two of us. We heard him say that's two. It can't be. So the next night after that, he sent three other thieves. And the next night, four. And five. And six. And so it went to the 40th night. And the chief said, This time I will go with you myself. <coughs> so all the 40 thieves climb up to Ahmed's roof to listen. Inside, Ahmed gazed at the last Ahmed in the jar and then sadly took it out and ate it. That's 40, the number is complete. Jamel sat beside him. Ahmed, during these few days, I have been thinking it was wrong of me to make you something or not. Do you forgive me? I forgive you, Jamal, but the fault is mine as well. I should not have done what I knew was not wise, but none of this will help us now. Just then, came a lot banging at the door. The king's man already? Alright, I know why you're here. He swung the door open. To his astonishment, he saw 40 men kneeling before him and touching their heads to the ground again and again. Of course you know, oh great fortune teller. Nothing can be hidden from you, but we beg you not to give us away. Very well, I won't turn you in, but you must return every bit of treasure. At once, at once. And before the night was through, 40 pairs of hands carried away 40 packets of mother water into the king's treasury. Early the next morning, Ahmed appeared in the kitchen. Your Majesty, my magic arts can find either the treasure or the thieves, but not both. Which do you choose? The treasure, I suppose. Don't so pity not to get the thieves. The boiling oil should be ready for them. Tell me where the mummy monster packets are and I'll send my men right away. No need, your majesty. Ahmed waved his hand in the air and called, Fish, wash, wish, wash, fish, wash. With my magic power, the mummy monster packets are going to return to their place. The king himself went with Ahmed to the mummy monster packets. You're truly the greatest fortune teller of the time. From this day forth, you shall be my royal fortune teller. Thank you, your majesty, but I'm afraid that's impossible. Finding and restoring your treasure was so difficult, it used up all my magic powers. I shall never be a fortune teller again. What a loss. You shall take two of these mummy monster packets for your own. <laughs> so, I'm going to carry home to your man. Say, Rich. And as any fortune teller could have foretold, they lived happily ever after.